Fluids nine. Can you explain why we can divide the pressure by specific weight to get PSIG of 40.3 PSIG? I would think that when solving this equation, the specific weight of water would have already been incorporated earlier. But in this case, it appears as if the ratio of pressure to specific weight gives you pressure. Yeah, I can see how that would be confusing. Um, let's take a look at that one, fluids nine. Um, I'm not gonna go into the whole context of this problem since you guys have it. If you have other questions about this problem, you're welcome to ask. But I wanna get to the specific questions being asked, which I think kinda has to do with the end here. And uh, I wrote up some notes on this as well. So it, it's looking at the end like pressure is being divided by specific weight, um, but that's, not actually what's happening. Um, P1 is being divided by gamma and that, that term, P1 over gamma, is being kept that way. Uh, I think what's confusing is that right here, P2 over gamma is being expanded into 80 PSI times 2.31 as opposed to being multiplied by something, <laughs> which, you know, uh, it, here it's divided by something and then right below it when I go to do it out instead of dividing by something and multiplying by something. So why is that? I think that's what caught this person's attention. That's probably where the question's coming from. And the reason is I'm using a rule of thumb here and multiplying by 2.31 feet per PSI rather than dividing by the specific weight and then multiplying by 144 square inches and, and showing all those units. And um, I could have done it. I could have shown all those units and kind of dragged you through that. And that would be the more rigorous way to show the solution to this problem. But I very intentionally showed the rule of thumb here because it's easy to remember. You're less likely to make a mistake. And I want you to know this rule of thumb and use this rule of thumb. And it's going to allow you to go fast. So I think you'll like it. Uh, I'll, I'll go through the background of it. I think it's worth taking a couple of minutes to do this. Some of you may have seen me go through this in another video already. Um, and, and the point of doing this is not for you to remember every little thing about what I'm going to say. It's for you to get the spirit of it and never have to think about it again, but you'll trust the rule of thumb. So that's, that's my goal for what's going to happen in the next five minutes. So we know this idea that pressure equals rho GH. We've seen that again and again. <clears throat> so density times gravity times the height of a column of water or a column of whatever fluid we're dealing with. But actually that's only true uh, in SI units. Unfortunately for US customary units, we have to instead say that, um, so this is SI. For US, we have to say P equals rho G H over G C, which drives people crazy. <laughs> and, I, and I understand. So what's up with G C? G C has the same magnitude as G. So numerically, they just cancel out. But from a unit perspective, they don't. And that's what we're going to show here. So what is, uh, what's actually going on when we plug this in? Let's deal with this. And I'm just going to write the units here. So the units of density are pound mass per cubic foot and the units of gravity are feet per second squared. And the units of height are feet. And then the units of GC are feet per second squared times pound mass over pound force. Don't worry, you're never going to have to do this on the PE exam. <laughs> um, so what happens? 
pound mass cancels out and pound force remains, that's very intentional, that's, that's no accident. Um, we get feet in the denominator, um, canceling with feet in the numerator, and then uh, feet in the numerator, one of these will cancel out, you'll end up with two, and then second squared cancels, and pound force comes to the top. So ultimately we end up with pound force, over feet squared. Okay, so that's all well and good. So then what is gamma? Why is it that sometimes in US customary units we write instead of rho GH over GC, we don't wanna deal with GC, nobody likes GC. That's just adding time and strain and uh, brain injuries. So instead we say P equals gamma H where gamma is just defined as rho G over GC. This is our way of abstracting away GC. And it has the exact same magnitude as the density. So if it's 62.4 pound mass per cubic foot, density for water, then it's 62.4 pound force per, per square foot, uh, per cubic foot. Same magnitude, different units, pound force instead of pound mass. Um, so what's the implications of all that? Well, first of all, the main implication is that most of the time we're just going to use gamma, but there's a further simpli simplification available to us that we should pursue. Um, and that's to say, what are we going to do once we get that pressure in units of um, pound force per square foot? We don't think about PSF generally, pounds per square foot. We generally think about PSI. So one of the first things that we're going to end up doing is changing that unit, canceling out that square foot, and dividing instead by 144 square inches. That's what's going to allow us to get that into PSI. And now we have pounds per square inch, or PSI. And that wouldn't um, be too interesting all by itself, but when we combine that with, uh, so now let's just talk about water because this is the rule of thumb that I want to give you. So for water and only for water, please don't go and do this for other liquids that are not water and have it lead you astray. If you want to go from uh, PSI to feet, How would you do that? Well, here we had to divide by 144 to get to PSI. So we're going to have to multiply by 144 to go back the other way. And then we'll be pounds per square foot. And then we're going to have to divide by the density or the specific weight, if you want to think about it that way. So we're multiplying by 144 and we're dividing by 62.4. Multiplying by 144 and dividing by 62.4. And what is that ratio? 2.31. So now all you have to remember is that there are 2.31 feet per PSI for water. So if you have a water column that is 2.31 feet high, then at the bottom of that column of water, there's exactly one PSI. And if you wanna go in the other direction, you want to go from feet to PSI, all you have to do is divide by 2.31. So coming back to this solution, why am I just multiplying by 2.31? Because I know I want to go from PSI to feet and there's 2.31 feet per PSI. So I'm going to go straight there. I'm almost looking at this P2 over gamma. I don't even see in my, in my, my eyes look at this and I'm not looking at, okay, this thing's being divided by gamma. I'm looking at the whole thing as a pressure and I'm flexible enough to think about, is this pressure being treated as a true pressure as in PSI, or is it being treated as the height of a column of water? In which case it's gonna have units of feet. I'm gonna let the units dictate which one it is. In this case, it's PSI. And then if I need to change it to feet, I'll multiply by this conversion factor. If it's in feet and I need PSI, I'll divide by that. 
It's absolutely trivial, provided you're dealing with water. All right, so I, I hope that makes it super simple for you. For those of you who already knew about this rule of thumb and have been using it for, for weeks, this is probably painful to hear me dragging you through this. Uh, but if you're at the beginning of your process and you're like, hey, what is this rule of thumb? I hope you can you know, feel super confident about using this whenever you need it and uh, you know, practice with it until you get comfortable and you should be good.